Okay, so they're doing a preview of the uh, Detroit and Dallas. Let's just you know listen in, see how much of this I agree with. Just hit the road off a bye, off two, if you're a One Pride fan. The scene of the crime. Presents a wide open. It is caught. Taylor Decker. Is there a flag down? What else could it be? Coaching by number 68. Of course it's a flag. This is Dallas. Cough back, looking, throwing. It is incomplete off the hands of James Mitchell. And the Cowboys are going to survive. Dallas Cowboys just call it home. They're back from a road trip that went much better than it did for Tom Green. Prescott. crossing. It's caught for the touchdown. It's Tolbert. And just like that, Dallas is back over 500. Dak Prescott, he wasn't perfect versus Pittsburgh. He threw two INTs, lost a fumble. Jason, coming in, blow out. Steelers have forced the turnover. But he also threw two touchdowns, the most important one at the end. 350 plus yards, 8.4 yards per attempt. Taking off now, fires to the end zone. Caught by Dowdle for a touchdown. What kind of secondary is Prescott up against this week? Detroit has held quarterbacks to a sub-90 rate, only four touchdowns allowed, four picks. Detroit is a fine defense. Uh, I'm going to go with Detroit on this one simply because I'm not sure Dak can deal with that kind of defense. I mean, he didn't do that good against Pittsburgh. I mean, yeah, they won, but he didn't do that good on it. So I, I got Detroit. X. Safety's Brian Branch, Kirby Joseph playing great. Joseph with three INTs, a rating allowed of zero. He needs to work on lowering that. End zone and intercepted by Kirby Joseph. C.D. Lamb will do battle with cornerback Carlton Davis quite a bit. On one hand, he's allowed 300 plus yards for the year, rate allowed near 110. He also spends a lot of time against WR1s, and he seems to spend a lot of time drawing phantom flags, but what do I know? Lamb, he comes in off a 62-yard five-catch outing. And Prescott protected, throws. C.D. got the toes down. Lions have held wide receivers to a low 80s rate. Cornerback Terion Arnold, low 80s rate. Cornerback Amik Robertson, low 70s rate. Aside from Lamb, they have Cavante Turpin to deal with as well. 50 yards as a receiver last week. Got more looks with Brandon Cooks out. Zach throwing in the middle for Turpin. Who's got it at the 20-yard line? Dallas's top receiver week five, also a wide receiver. Jalen Tolbert, the hero catch, also had 87 yards, was Dak's most targeted due. Lions also have tight end Jake Ferguson to worry about. Caught six of his seven targets versus Pittsburgh for 70 yards. Prescott's throws complete. Which is all fine and dandy, but like you said earlier, that's a really good defense they're going against. So I, I really don't see how that's going to go. Plus, Detroit got a good pass rush, if I remember correctly. Jake Ferguson, first hit of the night. Ferguson inside the 15. How much time will those guys have to get open? Lions pass rush, 11 sacks, almost three per game is nice. Aiden Hutchinson, the key threat, he'll try both Dallas's tackles out, has six and a half bags. They won't, they won't tip me. I'm like that. Dak was sacked two times by Pittsburgh on 42 pass attempts, so not that bad. T.J. Watt was kind of a problem for right tackle Terrence Steele, though. He had one and a half sacks. T.J. Watt there with a flag down. The two Russians meet at the quarterback again. Cowboys run game. It came to life versus Pittsburgh. Rico Dowdle, 87 yards, 4.4 a run. He's been good for four plus last four games in a row. Leg and there's the run by Dowdle. Good run. Across the 45. He squares off with a Jack Campbell, Alex Anzalone run defense, holding backs to 3.6 a carry. Here is a toss to Walker. Missed the last two games, and he's wrapped up with a loss. That's a really good stat right there. How are you going to run against that defense? And you got Dak Prescott's going to be in a lot of heat and a lot of trouble, so I don't know. On the play. Detroit did give up 34 plus rushing yards to Baker, Kyler, and Geno. Dak not much running last week. Neither of these QBs runners really. Why would Jared Goff bother if every pass he throws he completes? 19 straight, 18 straight in one game with zero incompletions. NFL record. That's what Dallas's secondary is up against in Goff. The one guy who was like, we have a bye now? Come on, bro. Amon Ross St. Brown's going to throw it back to Goff. Who had that on 
the bingo card. Now he tries to keep it going versus a Dallas defense that gave up two touchdowns to Justin Fields, no picks. Big butts don't lie, though. They held Fields to 131 yards passing, 4.9 yards per attempt, no pass catcher with even 40 yards. Fields looking deep. Yeah, but Detroit, God, God would make those throws. I mean, I like Justin Fields, but God would have made those throws. Throwing deep downfield towards Van Jefferson, broke it up. The challenge this week, much harder, of course, going to be tested on every level. The best one-on-one, -on -one, according to substitute teacher Garvey, when Trayvon Diggs tracks Eamon Ray St. Brown. Oh, so you're an actual saint? Amon Ra, Goff's top target, close to seven catches a game. It looked good. The catch, the toe taps, that's a tutty. Sit the flip down, Jaqueline, but someone on the boys has to keep up with Jamison Williams, too. Gotta be A-trained fast. Williams, Detroit's leader in yards, the kid flies. Here is a completion to Jamison Williams. He is gone. Tight end Sam Laporta. Numbers don't pop off the page, but he's still top shelf material. Play action. Dropped off. Pass caught. Laporta still rumbling. Lions O-line. Pressure rate allowed a little high across four games. Left tackle Taylor Decker allowed three sacks so far, but only seven sacks taken total. Cowboys pass rush, down Micah and Demarcus Lawrence, but they did rack fields three times. And he just yeah, that might be a problem. But Goff gets really... Well, Goff does hold on to the ball longer than he should, but... He got a good wide receiver and he got a good running game. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think Dallas is going to be behind early. Let's say Amalo on his back and then goes and gets the quarterback. What a play by Linville Joseph. If they heat Goff up, which isn't easy, they have to worry about him dumping to his backs. Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, averaging five catches a game, over 40 receiving yards. Another completion, another short one, and bouncing off the tackle is Montgomery. What a catch and run. Still going. Uh, Devin Witherspoon, Smokey from Friday, is on line one. Montgomery hitting at 4.3 a carry, 67 yards per game, painted the zone four times. And for the touchdown, Montgomery. Gibbs, 71 yards per game, three scores, 5.3 a pop. Hand off to Gibbs, a walk-in touchdown. Dallas's defense held Najee Harris to three a carry, but I mean, everybody does, so you know. <laughs> Dallas and Detroit have been a thing 31 times, boys up 19 to 12. Let's jump in with Doc and Marty. What year do they dump us out in? It was the first time they ever played each other in the playoffs. One of the greatest final scores in the history of the NFL, let alone for a playoff game. Cotton Bowl, both teams were 10 and four. Wasn't bad weather, just bad quarterbacking. Detroit's Greg Landry throws for 48 yards. Dallas's Ouch. Craig Morton, 38, and he wins by the score of five to zero, which has happened three times in NFL history, once. I'm assuming that's a field goal and a uh, safety? Ugh. In the 20s. Now only the 49ers stood between Dallas and something they had never won, the NFC Championship. But like I said, we're going for Detroit on that one, so I guess these are the these are the predictions. All right, yeah, Detroit, 31. Let's go 31-18.